Good morning everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared and this is my channel Mazda B3K. This is going to be a five minute fix video about replacing your front wheel speed sensor on a 1997 Ford E150 Econoline. Without further ado, let's get started. We're going to pick it up from where you got the tire off. Uh, it's a 21 millimeter to get the, the lug nuts off. I use a little pry bar to pop the cap off. But we're going to pick it up from there and let's take a look at what's going on. So I covered this somewhat in when I rebuilt the front brakes, but I uh, figured I'd do this as an individual thing. Also, since this sensor took a dump again, so, you know, it's two strikes are out kind of thing. All right, so this here is the connection for your wheel speed sensor right here. This is where it talks to the computer. And then it hitches a ride on your brake line, comes in, and then it's, uh, it comes down. Apologies for the potato there. So that is your brake line, but it comes down. Actually, no, that's correct. Into the knuckle, which I need a flashlight so you can see better. But it comes down right there into the knuckle, uh, back of the back of the hub, whatever you want to call it. So there are two. The actual sensor is held in with an eight millimeter. There's a guide piece right here, held in with an eight millimeter. And then the, sorry about that, I'm trying to spin the phone around. And then you've got these guides. You just pop it out. Um, these are part of the brake line. They are not part of the wheel speed sensor. So when you get a replacement, it's not gonna have these clips. Keep that in mind, try not to break these. So, removal is pretty straightforward. Push down on this tab right here. I need two hands to do it, but push down on the back and pull. That'll separate you from here. There's, it'd be a little easier. There's a giant plastic guide that pops out. So get that out of the way. And then pop out from these clips. And then you've got the pair of eights. You do the thing with the eights. And then the tricky part of this all is wiggling the actual sensor out. If you've had it out recently, it'll wiggle out pretty easy. If you hadn't had it out in a hot minute, you got to fight on your hands. And uh, I'll explain it. I'll show you uh, the replacement, and it's easier to see that way. All right, so here is a replacement. I actually bought both, front left, front right. I don't remember which one this is, but they're functionally the same. Just the cable lengths are a little different. This is your actual sensor. This is the magnetic tip. This magnetic tip interacts with, let's call it a tone ring or a tone gear on the back of your rotor. And that sends a signal that the computer can interpret to figure out how fast the wheels are spinning. What can happen is this can get scratched up or it can get rusted over and really dirty. And then the signal it sends is out around, out of spec, and you're no good. What can also happen is you can get water up in here, and then your connections get corroded, and then it, it takes a dump on you. So one thing to always check before you condemn a sensor, look here, see if you see a bunch of green crusties in here. If you do, you might be able to clean them out and save the day, maybe. Anyway, this gets inserted, like so, into the back of your knuckle. This is like a washer, right here. And that's where your bolt goes through. And when you go to take this out, if it's been a long time, it'll be kind of rust welded in. You have to kind of wiggle it, you have to hit it with some PB, uh, hit it with the pry bar. Uh, you may bend this up a little bit. I think all this is is for guidance. I don't think it does any really any weather sealing. So you bend it up a little bit. That's probably okay. But once eventually you'll get it out. And if you're servicing, just clean the tip. 
use uh, just use a rag, maybe some PB blaster. Try to get all the filings off of this because this is magnetic, right? It's going to pick up anything that's ferrous. And uh, then put it back in. If you're replacing, grab your new sensor, put it in. One thing to note, it was really hard for me to find this sensor. If you have a 97 Econoline, they only use this sensor for, I think, for two years. Across various models and engine platforms of Econoline, so... If you happen to find these, hold on to them. They are hard to get. So laying out and comparing the parts here. Like I said, I, I bought both of the fronts because initially both were reading failure. It turns out one was missing a tone ring. And then this guy here was just really banged up. But when you look at the layout of the two, this one fits. This is an ALS-193, so the driver's side is an ALS-193, and I think the passenger side, for educational purposes, is an ALS-165. Like I said, if you happen to have these, hang on to them, or go ahead and put them out in the secondary market. These are hard to find, because for just basically only use these for whatever reason with the Econoline. The ones that they put in the F-150s of the same era. Totally different sensor. You can pick it up for Chinese ones for 20 bucks anywhere. And you're fine. But these, no. These took some searching. Took some searching. Anyway. I'm going to go ahead and start putting this thing back in. And uh, if you want to make it go in a little bit easier, you can try a little... A little bit of PB, but if you've cleaned out the the bore that this goes in and everything, uh, it should go in pretty easily. This actually came out relatively easily because I'd already done that. I cleaned out the hole that goes in the knuckle and then the uh, brake shield and all that good stuff. So anyway, let me get this back in and then we'll see what the ABS self test tell us. All right, so did some staring and comparing, and even though the uh, 193, which is that, uh, whoever had this wrote right on it, and they were correct, this is for the passenger side. The 165 is for the driver, even though the bins in it are a little bit different. The key thing is when you go to insert this, the wire needs to be pointing kind of up and down. And then the keeper needs to line up right in the knuckle. And the uh, 193 did not. The 165 did. That being said, they made this washer bracket thing too big. So I had to get my grinder out and I had to chop the end of it off. So I could spin this just a little bit more to get it to line up so I could put the bolt back in. But anyway, it is all back in. I'm showing you on the, this is the passenger side. But I've got the driver's side back in. So we're good to go. As you can see, we're reconnected. We're back inside the guides. That keeper bolt's back in. The main keeper at the sensor itself is back in. So uh, now let's see if when the ABS does its self-test, when you turn the key and prepare to crank the vehicle, if we pass self-test. And if we pass self-test, that's good, but then there's a second set of checks it does. Once the vehicle is moving, I think, at least 14 miles an hour, and if you pass those checks, well, then you're good to go. And this is all important because if your sensor's acting up, you don't have ABS, it turns the system off. And that also means that if you have cruise control, that gets turned off. So it's important to get this working and keep it working. Alrighty, folks, it has been, I don't know, about a month since the last segment on this. And just wanted to go ahead and wrap this up. So I mentioned in the last segment, there's two different things we're looking for. We want to see if the ABS light's going to turn on when we just put the key in the on position and it will initially turn on then it does a test if it's hard to hear but 
you'll actually hear the ABS pump go through a quick self-check. It makes kind of a grindy <clears throat> sound. But you'll see there's no ABS light, which means that, sorry about that. It means that it went through its basic self-check and it's fine. And I can go ahead and tell you, so that I don't get pulled over for filming and driving, that the movement test above 14 miles an hour, that went great as well. Both front sensors are working. In fact, both wound up, had to be new. Uh, when I had new tires put on, the tire shop didn't check clearances between wires and wheel weight, so uh, I had a wheel weight slice through the wire on the passenger sensor, and I had to replace it, which was very poopy. But anyway, uh, this is a good repair. Uh, ABS is working. Uh, cruise control is working, and... Well, like I said, the ABS system works, so life is good.